two months ago, I made a video about Apollo Automation MSR1. Very small, but feature-packed present sensor. Today we will be looking at another Apollo Automation sensor. This time it's not so small, but it really is feature-packed sensor called Air1. And spoiler, I'm loving it. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Note, Air1 was sent to me by Apollo Automation free of charge. No money was exchanged except me paying for the customs and local taxes, if I'm not mistaken. Also, Apollo Automation hasn't seen my video before it was released, nor they had any influence on the content of the video. Now for the fun stuff. I was a bit surprised at the size of this sensor, especially after reviewing MSR1, as that one was so tiny and this one is huge, at least compared to that one. But when you hear what's inside, you'll ask yourself how they managed to pack everything inside. Case of the sensor is 3D printed, same as with MSR1, and I really like that idea. Using 3D printers for parts of the production is something I really love and really support. I didn't manage to get completely inside, it's possible, but I was afraid to damage something and didn't want to force it open. But what's inside the box? Sock of the board is ESP32C3. Besides compatibility with ESP Home, that also means that it can be used as a Bluetooth proxy with Home Assistant. And that is something that we really like to see in devices such as this one. For air quality, board is using SN55. This sensor is used to monitor PM1, PM2.5, PM4, PM10, VOC or volatile organic compounds, NOx, temperature and also humidity. I so far had some experience with SDS-011, but that one is a toy comparing it to this one. Also SDS-011 had lifespan of around 2 to 3 years, while this one, if I'm not mistaken, has 10 years of continuous use, life cycle or lifespan. Of course, some of you will say that there is impact of temperature from SOC or ESP32 board, and that's correct. Same with MSR1, you can then play with the offset. I've managed to calibrate it in such a way, or actually it was calibrated in such a way, that I don't see any difference between the Air1 temperature measurement or some other sensors that are sitting nearby to this one. As additional option for this sensor, you can choose this MICS4514. That one is also packed with what it can do. It has CO or carbon monoxide sensor, COH5OH, ethanol sensor, H2, NO2, NH3, CH4 or ammonia and methane sensors, and that's a whole lot of sensor data that we can capture and get inside Home Assistant. Besides that, we also have optional CO2 sensor and DPS310 as a barometric pressure sensor. And that's not all. We also have RGB LED that we can control and use inside our automations too. I've mentioned the size of the sensor that it is big. It is big compared to MSR1, but it is actually small. It's only 61 by 61 by 30 millimeters. I've seen a lot of air quality sensors. I've even supported some on Kickstarter, but never ever have I seen a sensor packed as this one. Of course, with all of this and by using not some cheap no name parts, prices also not cheap, but then again you get what you pay for. And in this case you are not getting some cheap IKEA style air quality sensor. You get a real thing. But now let's see how hard it is to add this device inside Home Assistant. Actually it's not hard. You need to connect power with standard USB-C cable and connect to it via the access point that starts automatically when you power the device on. After you connect to its Wi-Fi, you select Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi network from the list, type in your password and you are good to go. Next, you need to find the IP address of this device after, of course, it has connected to your Wi-Fi network and you need to type that address in the web browser. And you should see something like this. Same as with MSR1, you get the list of all of the options or all of the sensors on the device itself. You have option to calibrate the device by clicking this box here. And yes, first thing you should do when you get this device out of the box, when you connect it to your Wi-Fi network, is power it via the power bank, take it outside and then do the calibration. That way it will calibrate to the clean outside air. Hopefully you live in area where the outside air is clean. If not, calibrate it inside your home. 
I'm not sure what is the cleaning cycle or how often you should clean SN55. I don't recommend that you do that every day. But every couple of months, you should press this button and do cleaning of the sensor itself. You have option to reboot the device, to factory reset the device. You can control the LEDs. You can do pulse, slow pulse or fast pulse, change the brightness, turn it off. And you can also do the offset for the humidity and temperature sensor. If you're annoyed by the blinking of the LEDs, white LEDs inside the device, you can turn it off so that the device will not blink if you reboot the device. And if you have a new firmware, you can click here, select it and then update the firmware. Since this device is ESP Home based device, after you edit to Home Assistant, you can also add it to ESP Home and then you can control the firmware, update it via the ESP Home inside Home Assistant. So you will not need separate firmware for that. If you do not want to use it, you can actually update it to the latest ESP Home by pressing the update button inside Home Assistant. After the device has been successfully connected to the Wi-Fi network and you have calibrated it and prepared everything, you can of course add it to your home assistant. It should be automatically recognized. If it is recognized, just click on the integrations page on the configure and this should be it. If the device was not recognized, go to the settings page, integrations, click on add integration, type in ESP for ESP home and type in the IP address of your device. And that's it, device is now also added to Home Assistant. As I mentioned when I was talking about specification of the device, this device is really packed with all of the sensor data that you can pull inside Home Assistant. I don't know what you will be doing with that data, it's all up to you. But if you want to add everything, you have following controls that you can add to your dashboard. I really wouldn't recommend adding them, except maybe for the RGB light. Then we have all of the sensor data that you can add to your dashboard. These are quite nice and you can, of course, add them. You can create nice graphs with it, but these are also great to be used in your automations. Then we have configuration options, which I once again don't recommend to add to your UI because you can always go inside this integrations page and configure everything there. And then we also have some diagnostics. But for example, this is how it may look inside your home assistant. Again, I don't see point of having these here or these two. These are the things that would actually be under the hood, same as these ones here. But you really can have, and I recommend that you add following data to your UI, especially if you add them into the graphs. And here we can track the state of the ammonia, CO, CO2, ethanol, hydrogen, methane, and NO2. And the bottom one contains small particles. We have PM1, 2.5, 4, and 10. And in the history tab, it looks something like this. This is more or less 24 or 30 hours of data inside my installation. These couple of first sensors are not that interesting, except the ESP temperature one. It is really close to the temperature that is actually currently in the living room, where the sensor is now located. This is the information about the CO2. You can see that it started to rise in the morning but there are also two spikes. And these two spikes is something that I've been playing with. One of the spikes is the isopropyl alcohol. I sprayed a bit on my hand. This is the spike that you can see here. Or you can also see this one in the graph for PM1, PM2.5, but also in the graph of the VOC or volatile organic compounds. These are, for example, the chemicals, paints, or the cleaning solutions that you're using in your home. Also high methane numbers, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, ammonia, and ethanol. During my isopropyl alcohol testing, I actually didn't need to spray from the bottle. When I just approached with the bottle like this without spraying, it already picked up some of the particles in the air. Also one of the spikes is my toilet testing, but we will not be talking about that one. During all of the testing that included isopropyl alcohol, some other chemicals, and also ICOS, it really detected everything, also frying in the kitchen. This sensor can be used for a bunch of things. For example, you can create automation that would be used in a kitchen. If methane levels are over some specific level, you can get notification, or it can cut off the electricity, or cut off the power to your oven, or something like that. You can use this device inside garage or garage to track the carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. 
Same thing can be used to track inside your home office or your bathroom or your bedroom or wherever people are living for the levels of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, but also some other concentrations and levels. You can also use this simple sensor that interprets the data. For example, currently it's extremely abnormal inside our apartment. That means that we should start the air purifier, AC, open the windows or do something to get better quality of the air inside. This device can be used in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in a kid's room, in your office building, in your garage, in your workshop. For example, if you work with the chemicals, resin printers or normal printers, if you're printing something with ABS, it can tell you when the levels are too high, to when the room, etc, etc. The documentation for the Air One is once again beautiful, same as with MSR One. You have everything that can guide you to the setup process, calibration and updating, examples of the dashboards, troubleshooting pages, additional information, and also reviews of the device. By the way, if you haven't seen Simon Says, he made interview with the Apollo devs, so I really do recommend and I will be posting a link down to Simon Says channel where you can see the whole interview. It is a really good interview and I really do recommend for you to check that one out. The only downside of this device, unfortunately, is the price. The normal cost or normal price of the device is 84 euros and 88 cents but that is without the CO2 or gas sensor. If we add CO2, the price goes to 103 euros and 95 cents, and when we add the gas sensor, it jumps to 142 euros and 10 cents. That is, as I said, the high price, in my opinion. But also remember, this is high quality components inside this device. Sure, you can go to IKEA and buy 30 or 40 euros device to measure the air quality, but it actually is measuring almost nothing. I think it's measuring only PM2 and PM10. And you do not see the numbers in the old version. In the new one with display, I think you can see the numbers, but that's it. No carbon monoxide, no carbon dioxide, nitrogen, methanol, anything else. That's it for this type of device with these high quality sensors inside. Yeah, unfortunately, you will probably not buy 10 of them to put them in each of the rooms, but you could potentially get one full featured or full packed sensor and then go for the lighter version in some other rooms. One thing you must remember, this is not a certified device. This device will not replace your official smoke sensors, CO2 sensors, CO sensors, etc. This is more of a smart home enthusiast version to pick up as many sensor data as you can. This can be additional device that puts a layer on top of the existing devices to get you a better night's sleep. This device will be replacing my current device that I have at home and that is the DIY Luftdatten sensor. That one is using SDS-011 and it's been running for 3-4 years it's time to retire it and replace it with something that is better and that I can actually hook up and use in other automations. I will be hooking up this to AC. I will also be hooking up this to other vents inside my apartment. So when the quality of air is reduced, I will start to circulate the air. Also, I will be using that one to push notifications when to open and when to close the windows. Overall, this is really nice device. The link to this device will be down in the description of the video, so go check it out. And before I end up this video, I really would like to hear your thoughts. What do you think about this device? Would you pay such price for such fully packed device? Have you seen something very similar to this device and what that is? Or do you already use this device and have some issues with it that I still haven't detected? No matter if it's good or bad feedback or comment about this device, I really would like to hear it. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're already there, check that you are subscribed, if not, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss on the future videos. And before I end up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, commented and shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. 
I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.